Hello YouTube, and I've got to do it. Action! Right, today's episode starts at Discovery, if memory serves. That's the best one of the series, loved it. Uh, where do we start? Right, uh, Talosians, yeah, Talos 4. General order, is it number 7? Uh, death sentence if you go to that planet. Interesting, uh, like the start of the episode, we got the cage or the is it the cage, and then it will turn into the two part of the menagerie. We all know what happens to Christopher Pike and Berthold Braze when he ends up in the strange wheelchair with the three blinking lights. Uh, I forgot all about Vena, and Vena appeared. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, heading to Talos. Uh, Bock and Burnham. Leyland and Georgia were still carrying on with their war of words of who's going to dominate Section 31 and the dodgy admirals. Uh, there's been no murders. Spock never killed anybody. They've been lying about that. Pike's on the case. He's not. He's putting it all together. And and the episode is coming in from many directions. Uh, the Beanar, uh, the Beanar crew member, the robotic one. She's like, well, I said, I said my last review, Brainiac could took over, you know, with the free lights. Uh, she's been sabotaging the ship, you know, and blamed Tyler for it all. There's a great scene with Stamets' boyfriend, the Doctor, because he's going through this really messed up stuff of like coming back from the from the dead in this new body. Can't feel anything. He's like, you know. He, he don't know what's going on. He faces off with Tyler and Saru just says let him work it out. Uh, he's changed now. He's like, yeah, I think I think we're going to see a, a, like a more of a predator side in Saru. You know about the, the battle when they were on about his race and stuff. Looks like we're going to start seeing that. This like, side to him. Uh, we got to Talos, uh, they were great, it was brilliant, seeing like the uh, pilot episode here, it was like gone full circle. And it was brilliant, I thought the Talosians were superb, I thought Vena was a magical touch, you know, and it really touched on the Pike's relationship, you know, when it when he were trapped, trapped, uh, in, on that planet with her when they wanted them to mate and all this, you know. And they, they had this strong connection and they created... Because uh, when they left at the end of episode, when they said they can't keep humans in captivity in, that, in the pilot episode, they created an illusionary Captain Pike for her to live with, you know. And it, it is, it's, it's, you know, he did love her and, and it's sort of interesting exploring that. That there's this strong, powerful connection between them both. You can tell he's nervous when she just touches it. He's like, you know, she's like, I think she's like the one, you know what I mean? Uh, he's, I, I do like Pike. He, he's, you know, I'd be quite happy just having him for the next, seven, next five seasons of this. He's just, he's a bloody good captain, you know. But when he gets down to business, he's serious. Uh, Spock, the guy that plays Spock, I've got to admit, I'm quite impressed actually. I mean, he plays the part very well. <laughs> he's making it his own. I like Zachary Quinto played him sort of good, but I mean, he's the emotion thing. Uh, the Telosians, like as payment, they want, like, they'll show, they'll show, like, Burnham what Spock's seen, because, like, his timeline and logic and emotion all messed up. And uh, they balance his mind out and they show her what he sees. And obviously it's the entire galaxy being wiped out by this thing, this force from the future. You know, that, that thing at the shuttlecraft. Now, we know that the Red Angel is a human. It looks like it was, it was coming back to alter the timeline to put everything on track to stop this event from happening. But yeah, again, I mean, you know, if you go this way, you go back to like uh, Star Trek Voyager and that now. What about the Temporal Agency? Wouldn't they intervene in something? I mean, if the entire galaxy were going to get destroyed and, and Enterprise, wouldn't the Temporal Agency intervene? Surely, I mean, you know, where are them? But that's me going into canon. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, the, the old Salazian thing works out very nice. It was just nice seeing that again. It was a nice touch. And that discovery is obviously set in the prime timeline. Unless something is going to get altered into the future to separate it and make Discovery something else. I doubt it. I hope they don't do that. Because I do like Discovery. I'm really... Honestly, this season is, is far better than than the first series. It really... For me, it really is. I mean, last season... I, liked, I did like last season, but they put far too much in it to grab your interest. I mean, it was just like a big fruit basket of everything in there. And they should, really, they could have played that out over a, a two seasons, really the whole mirrorverse thing, which I would have preferred now. But the writing for this series so far has been pretty amazing. Really enjoying these episodes, which I'm watching. If memory serves, tonight's episode, I've just watched it now, just finished it, was really good. It moved along from many different points of view and the stuff with the crew on the ship, especially the, uh, with Tyler and the Doctor, and this is going to grow, and, and, and Stamets' his relationship with him, like, he's a totally different person. How's he going to get, like, ba back balanced emotionally? It's, it's all pretty hardcore, and this change in Saru. Again, I was talking about this with a friend of mine the other day who's a big fan of the series, and he thinks there's too much on Burnham. She's like got a destiny with everything, and I think they've got to be a bit careful with that. Yeah, I, I mean, my, my theory is that, that if we say this is all about Burnham's rise through the ranks, maybe in the final episode, she'll become the captain of the Discovery, and that's how it, and we're watching her, her life, like I said, we're meant to be seeing it through her eyes, uh, but, yeah, apart from that, yeah, it's, it's been very good, I love the supporting cast, I mean, it, it Discovery, everybody gave it a bad thing, and there's still some fans out there who won't watch it, but, I, you know, give it a go, I think it's worth it, but you've just got to stick with it, but tonight's episode, today's episode we get on Fridays in the UK, has been absolutely amazing. I, I, I really, the last three to four episodes has just been like really good. And well, I, I don't know if this has been the best time. My favourite episode so far, is, the one I really enjoyed was on Saru's planet. It was like Logan's runnish and it was like a proper episode of what Star Trek should be. But yeah, the crew, uh, you don't have, I've got a problem with any of it. Today's episode, it, it was just seeing the Vena thing and the Telosians, it just took me back. And I loved the start of the episode, you know, you know, I said a few minutes ago, but they really did something special with us today. Really enjoyed it. Awesome. And uh, yeah, that's my review of this episode. I've I've got nothing but positive things to say. It's gonna be interesting to I wonder if there is a kind of apparently in what well, let me say this right before I go. When I bought Discovery on Blu-ray, I sat and watched it. And I think it was by third or end at second episode. Lorca looks at himself in the reflection. And uh, he looked at himself, and that I thought when I watched it on Blu ray, that one moment told you who he was. You know, I didn't really, you know, I don't think a lot of people sort of picked up. I, I, I remember noticing it, but I thought, you know, but then obviously started questioning it. But if, I would read, you know, apparently there is the identification of the Red Angel in the first episode or second, there's an Easter egg in there, it's just fine, isn't it? I've read all theories, but apparently it's somebody, we're all going to be connected, it's all connected to, so it should be interesting to see who the Red Angel is, you know. But it's uh, like with Spock's timeline and stuff, I mean, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see this guy take on a character that's been established for 50 years, and from what I've seen tonight, he's been amazing. So that's it, guys. Uh, <laughs> live long and prosper. Uh, great, honestly, I don't want to spoil the entire episode because a lot of people have just been watching it now. But I do recommend this. Brilliant. Right, guys, I will see you on the next video. I've seen Captain Marvel today. 
I will be on back with that in a minute and uh, yeah I'll see you for the next Discovery episode I will be doing a big Orville review I've just caught up I think I'm on episode 7 now and uh, I'm going to start watching I'm going to catch up with a two parter and that and I will be doing a whole like 9 episode review of Orville in the next week so I'm just sort of like getting through it all now there's just so much stuff to watch, you know what I mean? I've got to have a life, guys. You know, you've got to go out and do stuff. Do you know what I mean? So, live long and prosper. And uh, like I said, see you on the next video.